Praise the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters around the world, following our online services. Welcome to Northampton Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to our worship at home, 15th of May, 2022. If you wish to follow our full service, you may wish to type the following link in your search bar. H double T full semicolon double slouch Northampton hyphen Methodist hyphen churches at methodist.org.uk. Do not forget to click on the button below to get notification and that link will take you to our website. We will be able to find variety of sermons done by our wonderful preachers and ministers and I can assure you, you will enjoy them. I wish you a good safari in our website. The Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 34 to 35 is the test for today's reflection. And I want to title it the apex of our safari, the apex of your safari, the apex of your journey. Shall we read, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35, if you have forgotten. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I've loved you, that you also love one another. 35. By this shall the world know that you are truly my disciples, if you love one another. This passage, these two portions of the scripture are also paralleled in John 15 verses 12. And 14 where Jesus emphasizes on love and he says a new commandment I give to you and whatever is new in this commandment of love is loving one another as Christ has loved you that sounds very challenging to love one another as Christ loved you. This test then reminds us as Jesus approached the end of his heavenly ministry, he summoned his disciples and he bestowed blessings and told them what to do in his absence. Told them, love one another. And by thought, the world will really know that you are truly my disciples. As I reflect, as we reflect on this test, I'm reminded of the end of life of an elderly person in the traditional life of the Ameru people of Kenya in my little village. I'm reminded that elders, when an elder or a member always elderly within a family, knew that they are approaching the end of their lives. They summon all members of the family, irrespective of where they might be scattered abroad. And they all came, they obliged and obeyed the summon of the elderly African Ameru village elder or village family elder. Whatever the case was, whether it is towards the administration of the estates or property, the most important thing were the words, expectation and anxiety of the members of the family of what that someone entails. And when they obeyed and they came home, the elderly pastor normally said, as I go, I wish you to remain united and loving one another and caring for one another. Those ones I can really remember them as sounded by my father, 1996, 
when the Lord called him home. I remember those words very clearly. And they are similar to stories around the Ameru in the traditional life of the Ameru in Kenya. We find similarly same trend in the life ministry of Jesus. When Jesus approached the end of his life, he summoned his disciples. Love one another as I have loved you. The question is, how were you when Jesus found you? How were you when Jesus found you? It is, could be true because every person has their own testimonies. Myself, I can say, Jesus found me, loved me with unconditional love. And I'm so grateful for the love of God in my life. I want to appreciate the fact that love can mean so many things to so many people in different contexts of life. That it's important that people know and appreciate those who have walked in their lives and loved them unconditionally irrespective of where they come from, irrespective of their color, irrespective of their language, irrespective of their tribe, irrespective of their nationality. You need to pause a moment and think about people who have walked in your life, accepted you the way you are. They have helped you, shaped your life to become an important person, shaped your spirituality, organized you. It is a moment to pause and say, express your gratitude to the people who have walked in your life and accepted you the way you are. This is what Jesus is teaching us. Love one another as I have loved you. And when you do that, the world will truly know that you are my true disciples. The question is a challenge from this commandment. To love somebody the way Jesus loved you is quite a complication, especially in the midst of the world today where evil exists, injustices exist. Jesus, are you asking us to love our perpetrators, to love people who have mistreated us in this life, to love people who have abused us, to love people who have done and rock, rocked our villages and our nations, invaded nations, people who have killed one another? Jesus, are you telling us to love those who do not care about us? Yes, Jesus is saying, love one another as I have loved you. You might be aware of people who want to use love like a pharmacist could use medicine. Measuring a drop of love to people because they speak a certain language, they come from certain cultures, they have a different color or skin. And love is just expressed in bias, in prejudice. That's not the teaching of Jesus Christ for people who call God, for people who confess Jesus Christ as Lord over their lives. If you claim the Lordship of Jesus in your life, and mistreat people, look at them with bias and prejudice, persecute them, and do all harm to them. The Lord is asking us and challenging us, love one another as I have loved you. And for true, we can see the expression of Christian love in that context. When we have seen people, nations are responding of other humanity in the midst of crisis. They have expressed the love of God. Nations responding to crisis in Ukraine and earlier on responding to crisis in Afghanistan, responded to crisis around the world of people who have been abused. Non-government organizations responding to express love where love has failed. God is calling politicians, God is calling leaders to express the love of God 
when it comes even to distribution of resources. In the midst of pandemic and rising standard of living, God is calling government to ensure everybody doesn't suffer, no one sleeps angry. And we pray that the commandment of God, which is quite challenging to each one of us, we can pray and ask God to enable us to be able to love one another. The Apostle Paul acknowledges the challenge of this commandment. In Romans chapter 7, verse 20, 21 to 22 to 24, Apostle Paul acknowledges the conflict within the human being. The law of the flesh, the law of sin, and the law of the mind. The flesh is as, accomplished, is as, as conflict with the spirit. The flesh and sin, they are at conflict at each other. Standing on the way of love. God is asking us to love one another. And if we find it too complicated, then we can ask the Lord to enable us, to give us, shed the love, his love, by the power of his Holy Spirit. Baptize us with the new spirit of love so that we'll be able to break anything that comes on the way of love. Read Romans chapter 12, verses 20 to 21, where Paul says, Remember to pray for your own enemies. Remember to pray for those who persecute you. Do good to them. And when you do good to them, it's like you are heaping a coal of charcoal on top of their hand. Do your part. Let God take revenge uh, for you. Do not pay evil for evil, but love one another. As Jesus expressed his own love, laying his life and dying for people like Simon Peter, Judas as sacred, among others, who really abandoned Jesus at the point of his need. Jesus expressed that love unconditionally. No wonder he was calling Simon Peter, asking, Simon, Simon, do you love me? Jesus knows that sometimes we love him because of the things we get back from him. But the love of God is not tying to any strings. We shouldn't love people for what we get from them. We shouldn't love people just simply because of what they give us. We should never be tied to a, that kind of love. Let's express willingly the love of God, especially in this tough moment when the living standards have risen. And in the midst of COVID, let's continue responding to the love of God as Christ loved his disciples, loved those who abandoned him, those who betrayed him, those who delivered him to the murderers. Jesus loved them. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord bless you and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode.